dudes lie. We exaggerate the size of the fish we catch, the size of our manliness, and the mileage that our cars get. We underreport our age, our weight, and the true cost of ownership for a DB9. If you're being seduced by the idea of ownership of an Aston Martin DB9, you should be asking yourself, what are the real true costs of owning this car? The purpose of this video is to answer just that question. I succumbed back in 2013 and bought this 2005 DB9 Coupe with just 15,000 miles on it. Since then, I've owned it for 1,180 days and I've driven it about 13,000 miles. During that time, I've tracked every expense in the car from the original purchase all the way down to the oil filters and the nuts and bolts I've used for the car. Check out Aston1936.com for the full details on how I derived all these numbers. So let's start talking about the costs. Ask anyone what they paid for their car and they're likely gonna pair it back to you the sticker price of the vehicle. But to me, that's not really the true price of the car. Now, I went and I negotiated a price of 63.5 for my car, but that's not what I was able to drive it off the lot for. I had to pay document fees for the dealer, sales tax, and title and registration to the state. By the time I could really get it off the lot, this car cost me $69,500. To me, this is the true price of the car. Now, our cars are constantly losing value. They're depreciating. So this car was worth at least $170,000 when it was brand new. And the original owners have then taken almost a $100,000 loss of depreciation value over the eight years they had it before I purchased the car. So all cars have depreciation, but luxury performance cars have it the worst. So it's this depreciation of the car that's making it possible for people like you and me to actually be able to afford this vehicle. Um, now, the original owner took the big hit, but now we can go out and buy these cars for what's a more reasonable price. Now, if you're thinking, this is a great investment, my car's gonna be worth more, it takes 25 to 30 years for cars to start to go up in value again. So that means in around 2030, my DB9 should start to go, should start to appreciate. In the meantime, I think we need to include the tr this depreciation as part of our true cost of ownership. Now, all we need to do to figure out our true cost, our depreciation value for today, is to figure out what the car is worth today. So if I was to turn around and sell my car, and what could I actually get for it? So I went out to Auto Trader, Cars.com, eBay, and I looked at the actual sold values of vehicles. Not what people were asking, but what people were actually getting for their cars. And I can probably realistically get somewhere between $42,000 and $45,000 for my car today. So that makes the math pretty easy. I paid $69,500 for the car. I can get $42,000 for the car. So that means I've taken a $27,500 depreciation hit in the three years I've owned the car. So if you break that $27,500 down, that works out to $23 per day I've owned the vehicle in depreciation or $2.09 per mile driven. This is the single greatest cost in the true ownership cost of this car. Now, if you never plan on selling the car, no worries. All cars need routine maintenance and a DB9 is no different. Um, typically a DB9 is serviced on either a one year or a two year service regime, both of which I have detailed up on Aston1936.com. Now, they certainly are not as inexpensive as a Toyota Corolla, but they are probably pretty com uh, comparable to something like a Porsche, Audi, or Mercedes uh, annual service routines. So this is certainly an area where you can save some money by you know, coming in and changing the oil yourself. Um, and that's what this blog is all about, is showing you how you can do these routine, uh, simple service steps. So all in for me over the three years I've owned it so far, I've spent about $1,600. That works out to about $1.35 per day or just 12 cents per mile driven. Driving your car wears it out. Wear and tear is a normal part of all of our car's usage. So things like the tires and the brakes and even the periodic replacement of the batteries I think can 
are wear and tear. So on my car, since I got it, I've put on one set of tires, uh, done the brakes once, and I've had to replace my battery once. Um, now my tires are starting to get a little thin. I expect this fall I'm gonna have to replace them before the rainy season. So I'm probably gonna get four years on a set of tires and brakes. And that's not too bad. That's actually comparable to most performance cars, I think. So all in, I think I'm about $3,500 in um, on uh, wear and tear. That works out to $2.94 per day I've owned the car or 27 cents per mile driven. So this is the scary thing, unscheduled maintenance. Everybody on, warns if somebody buying a car like this, hey, if you ever blow an engine, man, that's $30,000, um, which is true. But you know, I'm an avid reader of forums and engines in Aston Martin DB9s rarely blow up. But this is a hand-built British car. You need to expect some weird stuff to happen. Um, and then when it does, use this channel on YouTube and Aston1936.com to resolve some of those things. But when you get a hard issue, inevitably you're gonna to need to take your car to the dealership. Now dealers are very expensive. Um, there's nothing more depressing than walking out to your car and looking underneath and seeing oil drips. Now this has happened to me twice. Um, both of the times it was a well-known and common issue that happens to the DB9. Um, the first one that happened to me is my transmission oil cooler lines where they tie on to the, um, uh, the oil cooler itself. There are a leak forms there and uh, you get a drip that starts to appear a little bit further back underneath. So that took a couple thousand bucks to fix at the dealer. The second leak I had was at the front engine timing cover. Uh, now the good news they gave me was that they no longer needed to pull the engine to fix this particular leak. The bad news was is it took 15 hours at the dealership to fix this thing and cost about $5,000. So my wife has now named my car Princess Piddles. I have no more comments on that particular issue. So I'm about $9,000 in unscheduled uh, repairs and maintenance to this car. That works out to about $7.50 per day or 68 cents per mile driven. There are some costs on all cars that we just can't avoid. Fuel, insurance, title and registration. Those are all things we basically have to pay for. So on my car, I was able to work out my actual fuel mileage from the data. This thing got 11 miles per gallon. So thank you to all the Prius owners out there in the world saving the fuel for us DB9 owners. It's a V12, what can I say? Um, the other thing is insurance. And uh, the insurance on these cars aren't cheap, but insurance isn't cheap on any performance car. The companies know how damn expensive these things are to repair. So I pay about $2,000 per year to insure this car. I'm a 50 year old, perfect driving record, house discount. That's as cheap as I can get it. So it's not because I'm a crazy you know, out on the road. And of course, we all have to give a piece to the government. So I have the annual, um, serve or annual uh, tax and title registration stuff here in California. That's not really any different than any other car. If you take all those costs and put them together, it totals up to about $12.43 per day owned or at $1.12 per mile driven. So for me, there were a few other expenses I wanted to include. Not all of them might, ap might apply to you. Um, so one of the things, uh, us Aston Martin owners like to do is we like to keep our cars shiny. So you may have some expenses for soap and microfiber towels and wash mitts, um, or maybe you've got expenses with a detailer. Uh, I use kind of a combination of both, so I've included those in my calculations. Uh, if you're gonna do some of the maintenance yourself, you may end up going out and buying some specialty tools. I spent some money and bought a, an OBD2 reader to be able to talk to the car. So you should include uh, any expenses for tools that you have, like jack stands or something that you have to go out and get. And I also wanted to meet other like-minded owners. So I joined the uh, Aston Martin Owners Club, the AMOC, and uh, I've gone to some of their gatherings and I go to the uh, track day they host every year. So that's been a lot of fun, my sweetie and I go. So all in, it's about $3,600 over the three years I've owned the car. That works out to about $3 per day. Uh, or 28 cents per mile driven. So what does this all total up to all in? Well, $50 per day owned. Not just Sundays, not just the days I drove it. 
Every single day of ownership has cost me $50. Another way to look at that is it's worked out to about $4.52 per mile driven, or about $18,000 per year that I've had her so far. Now remember, about 50% of that total is depreciation, and you can choose to include that or not in your own mental calculation. Unscheduled maintenance and insurance are about 15% each, and everything else combined is the remaining 20%. All cars cost money. I've done the exact same detailed analysis on my last new car, which was a 2009 Acura TL all-wheel drive with tech package. Um, you can check out aston1936.com to see the details of that. Um, but I wanted to point out the massive amount of depreciation my new car took, which is typical of all new cars. 62% of its value uh, went away in the first five years since I bought it new. Um, now, one of the reasons people go and buy new cars is so that they don't have to worry about unscheduled maintenance and some of the wear and tear expenses. Um, I sold my car just before I needed to do any of the tires or brakes, um, at, right at sort of the five year mark. So I spent zero, nada, not even a dime on unscheduled maintenance or wear and tear. Um, so including depreciation, um, this worked out to be all total for my Acura, $22 per day owned and at just $1.52 per mile driven. That also works out to about $8,000 per year. Now my Acura got 17 miles per gallon. Remember it was a 307 horsepower all wheel drive car. So what can you conclude? Well, a used DB9 costs more to operate than uh, uh, a new modern car. No big surprise there. I'm often asked if I would buy the same car again after living with this one for the last three years. Well, yes, but I think you have an opportunity to maybe learn from my experiences and even do a little bit better. One of the things that I don't think that matters that much is the mileage. A 3K car versus a 15K car versus an 18K car. I don't think it's worth another $10,000 to knock a, just a few miles off the car. So as long as it's sort of, you know, 20,000 miles or less, I think you're getting a great deal. I would also suggest looking for a full detailed service history. Not just the stamps in the back of the book that say the car was serviced, but I'm talking about the actual uh, detailed uh, invoices from the shop that say exactly what steps they performed. The reason you want this is so that you can tell if the common ailments for a DB9 have actually been done on somebody else's dime. Um, another thing regarding service history is you want one that was uh, fully serviced by a real Aston Martin dealer during the warranty period, not somebody that was a do-it-yourselfer or a specialist. The reason for this is there's recall notices, there's field service bulletins that come out that say fix these certain things. If you're out at a DIY or a, a specialist, they may not know about those things, so they aren't fixed. If it was dealer serviced, all of that would have been addressed for free, and your car is probably going to be just a little bit better off condition with those things all fixed up. Now, I would probably say avoid the 04 through 06 cars and go out and get yourself a 2007. My reason for this is that by 2007, if you look at all the field service bulletins that have come out, most of the early issues are already all addressed and the car is pretty solid by 2007. In addition to all the niggles being worked out, uh, they've also made most of the options on the early cars were now standard on the 2007. So you get more features and less problems. So that's probably worth maybe the extra $10,000 it'll take uh, to purchase an 07. Now you might also want to consider getting um, an optional bumper to bumper warranty if you're buying your pre-owned car from an Aston Martin dealership. So maybe that warranty costs about $3,000 um, but if you had $8,000 of unscheduled uh, repairs during that first year, like I did with my two oil leaks, those things would have been covered, so it would have saved you about five grand. So anyways, you might want to consider uh, a bumper-to-bumper -bumper Aston warranty. In conclusion, though, if you're contemplating buying a $100,000 Porsche 911, Audi, or Mercedes, um, maybe consider this. In the first three years you own that car, you're probably going to take more than $40,000 hit on depreciation alone. Now, the de 
appreciation and unscheduled service for my DB9 was less than that. And if you consider that all the other expenses like fuel and insurance and registration are all going to be comparably the same, why not go out and get yourself a DB9? So go ahead, make the leap. I heartily suggest it. And when the niggles appear, and they will, um, please come back to Aston1936.com and maybe I can help you with a solution or two. And besides, when you go out and get into your car, does it sound like this? Mm -hmm.